students this video deals with the homeostasis related short questions and answers so let's get started question number one is what is lithotripsy the non-surgical removal of kidney stones is lithotripsy or the breakup of stones that form in the kidney ureter or gallbladder without surgery is lithotripsy the most common way to break stone is extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy High concentration of X-ray or ultrasound are directed from a machine outside to the stone inside the body. The shock waves break the stone into tiny pieces or into sand which are passed out of the body in urine. Question number two is explain hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Hem means blood. It is from hemoglobin. So hemodialysis means cleaning the blood. Blood is circulated through a machine called dialyzer. Dialyzer has two spaces separated by a thin membrane. Now what happens is that blood passes from one side of the membrane and dialysis fluid on the other. Waste and excess water passes from blood through the membrane into the dialysis fluid by osmosis. Like diagrammatically, this is the hemodialyzer where filtering takes place and this is the machine that is the hemodialysis machine. The unfiltered blood flows to the dialyzer as this arrow is indicating and the filtered blood flows back to the body as this arrow is indicating. So this is what hemodialysis is. Now let's see what peritoneal dialysis is. Abdomen has a peritoneal cavity lined by a thick epithelium called the peritoneum. Dialysis fluid fills the cavity through catheter that is a tube connecting the body. Excess water and waste pass through peritoneum into the dialysis fluid. Like that di diagrammatically you can see here that this is the peritoneal space with dialysate and this is the dialysate bag. The dialysate is inserted into the peritoneal space through catheter. Now what happens is that dialysate with waste products is drained from the peritoneal space into the drainage bag. This is the capillary carrying the blood. Waste products cross the semi-permeable membrane into the peritoneal space and the dialysate with waste products are drained from the peritoneal space into the drainage bag. So this is what peritoneal dialysis is. Question number three is what is uremia? Uremia is the condition of having urea in the blood. Uremia, urea in the blood. Uremia is a high degree renal failure, that is kidney failure. Dialysis cannot be done in this case. Surgical transplantation of a matching donor kidney is the only option left as the permanent treatment. Question number four is describe the adaptation in plants to face high temperatures. Students, plants are harmed by high temperatures. It denatures the enzymes and damages the metabolism. The adaptation is that the plants use evaporative cooling. Or the cells of these plants synthesize large quantities of special proteins called heat shock proteins. These surround enzymes thus help to prevent denaturation. Question number five is how do plants regulate at low temperatures and freezing temperatures? Students fluidity of cell membrane is altered in low temperature. Lipids of the membranes becomes locked into crystalline structure. This affects the transport of the solutes. Membrane protein structure is also affected. So the adaptation is that plants increase proportion of unsaturated fatty acids. It helps to prevent crystal formation. And the freezing temperature causes ice crystal formation. Ice formation around cell wall does not affect as badly as within the protoplasm because it perforates membranes and organelles and kills the cells. So the adaptation is that oaks, maples, roses are plants of cold regions. They bring changes in solute composition of the cell. They also cause cytosol to supercool without ice formation. Question number six is differentiate between poikilotherms and homeotherms. Animals that do not maintain their body temperature within a narrow range are poikilotherms. Their body temperature change more or less with ambient temperature. So they are also known as cold-blooded animals. For example, 
all invertebrates, fishes, amphibians, and reptiles are poikilotherms. And on the other hand, animals that maintain their temperature within a narrow range are called homeotherms. Their body temperature doesn't change with changing air and water temperature, and they're also called as warm-blooded animals. For example, birds and mammals are homeotherms. Question number seven is define heterotherms. The animals that have a variable body temperature are heterotherms. Animals that have a variable body temperature. They have variable degree of endothermic heat production. They generally do not maintain body temperature within a narrow range. For example, bats, hummingbirds, etc. Question number eight is differentiate between shivering thermogenesis and non-shivering thermogenesis. Rate of heat production is increased by increased muscle contraction by movements. For example, running, flying, jumping, or by shivering. So it is called as shivering thermogenesis. On the other hand, the hormonal triggering of heat production is called as non-shivering thermogenesis. For example, thyroxine produced by thyroid gland trigger heat production. The thyroxine, it triggers heat production and it is known as non-shivering thermogenesis. Question number nine is what are brown fats? Brown fat is a specialized fat for rapid heat production. It is found in newborn mammals, in mammals that live in cold climate and in mammals that hibernate. That is, they sleep throughout winter. Question number 10 is defined pyrexia. Temperature and fever is called pyrexia. When you get temperature, it is known as pyrexia. In bacterial and viral infections, leukocytes increase in number. And leukocytes, these are the white blood cells. This is our immunity system. These are the pathogens, the bad cells. These are the pathogens. The pathogens and the blood cells produces chemicals called pyrogens. Pyrogens displace the set point of hypothalamus above 37 degrees centigrade, which is a our normal body temperature. So fever, high temperature helps in stimulating the protective mechanism against the pathogens, that is the bad cells. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Wish you all the best.